Uh, dear students, uh, we will look into uh, different groups of bacteria because uh, the bacteria are divided into different groups based on the kind of uh, nutrition they have and the kind of uh, diseases they cause and things like that. Say for example, there is a group of uh, bacteria called actinomycetes. They are called actinomycetes. Uh, because they look like fungi, but they are not actually fungi, they are prokaryotic, they, the body looks like mycelium and all that, but there is no cell inside, no eukaryotic. But they are well known for the production of lot of antibiotics, lot of antibiotics are produced from this group of bacteria called actinomycetes. Similarly, the, I told you about spirochetes like corkscrew shaped uh, bacteria. They cause a specific disease called syphilis, you know there is one bacterium called uh, one spirochete called triponema pallidum which you will see shortly. So that causes syphilis right one of the sexually transmitted diseases. So we are going to talk about different groups and one such big group is called cyanobacteria blue green algae which I thought we will discuss about a little in detail. So if you look at uh, cyanobacteria or blue green algae they are very well known because they are the first primitive organisms which made the life atmosphere into the oxidizing one because initially the atmosphere of earth in a, in a million I am talking about millions of years back okay uh, more than 3.5 billion years that time you know when the organisms were evolving there was absolutely no oxygen in the atmosphere. The first organism to introduce oxygen into the atmosphere are the credit goes only to cyanobacteria because of them only we all came in aerobic organisms came in because of cyanobacteria. Now that is why you see uh, there are fossils of those bacteria available now which are 3.5 billion year old they are actually called stromatolites okay they are nothing but stromatolites. They are nothing but fossils of cyanobacteria. So, uh, if you look at the cyanobacteria, they are basically free living photoautotrophs, oxygenic photoautotrophs, and they they look like you know some of them are live se separately, some of them live in colonies. Examples include you know things like nostoc, anabina. And they photosynthesize just like you know the normal photosynthesis of higher plants. They have P photosystem 2, photosystem 1 and they use chlorophyll A. But they are called blue green algae because you know they have a special pigment apart from chlorophyll A they have special pigment called phycocyanin, phycocyanin and uh, phycoerythrin in variable proportions. Certain organisms have more phycocyanin than they appear bluish in color. Some of them have uh, phycoerythrin more than they appear reddish in color. You know red sea, red sea is called red because of cyanobacteria which have more of phycoerythrin right. So uh, these are the pigments found them found in them and as I told they have their pigments on the chromatophores which are extension of uh, the cell membrane. And uh, if you look at uh, most of the cyanobacteria, they have, uh, you know, they belong to the phylum called cyanophyce. The starch they deposit is called cyanophycian starch. And normally, you know, they inside them, they find, you will find gas filled vesicles which help them to keep, uh, you know, maintain that buoyancy. Since they have to float, they help them to maintain the buoyancy, they, they are called gas vesicles and many of the cyanobacteria uh, you know they are called nitrogen fixers. So they, they play a major role in the nitrogen cycle, how because they convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia. So atmospheric nitrogen can be fixed into ammonia, the process is called biological nitrogen fixation. Okay, and that is carried out by cyanobacteria because they have very very important enzyme which is called as nitrogenase. This enzyme is responsible for atmospheric nitrogen fixation. Uh, it is highly energy expensive process, very useful but uh, 
but uh, apart from that this nitrogenous enzyme is highly sensitive to oxygen which means a, a small tinge of oxygen it will get inactivated. So, how do cyanobacteria protect it? Because cyanobacteria they have special cells inside like for example, if this is a colony of a nostoc then you will find specialized cells like this which are very thick walled ok compared to other rest of the cells and that is known as heterocyst. So, what is the function of heterocyst? Heterocyst is thick walled to ensure that nitrogenase will not get oxygen because the moment it get oxygen it will be uh, inactivated. So, nitrogenase is found inside the heterocyst it will protect it right and apart from that uh, if you look at uh, uh, the cyanobacteria in detail they generally show asexual reproduction only where they grow very fast by fragmentation. You know this uh, term called algal bloom where you have seen in the previous slide right where you have seen that uh, you know the entire place the lake is filled with that bluish green uh, you know mat of cyanobacteria it is called as you know blue green algal bloom and uh, this bloom is very dangerous because many of the cyanobacteria produce toxins and they will kill all the aquatic organisms and the lake becomes lifeless after a while. So, that is one of the things that happen because of the algal bloom you know uh, suffocation happens uh, for other organisms because they take up oxygen and uh, they produce toxins and all that. Um, so, generally they reproduce by fragmentation and apart from that uh, the important thing about cyanobacteria is that you know they also uh, many of the cyanobacteria are highly nutritious. There is one called uh, spirulina you know one of the blue green algae called spirulina. Nowadays you go to medical shop and ask they will give you the tablet of spirulina because it is very rich in protein. So, uh, it comes under single cell protein. So, it can be used as uh, it is edible. So, uh, not all cyanobacteria are edible many of them produce toxins, but some of them are edible like this spirulina very rich in protein content. So, they used as supplement for proteins. So, that is how this uh, cyanobacteria work um, and apart from cyanobacteria uh, or blue green algae. Uh, you know uh, which are the nitrogen fixers that is the most important thing. They are also called as nitrogen fixing bacteria are also called as diazotrophs ok. Diazotroph means nitrogen fixing. So, this is about the most important group called cyanobacteria or blue green algae. And apart from this uh, blue green algae you find many other bacteria which cause so many diseases some of them are saprophytes and uh, if you look at uh, a group of bacteria uh, called as you know proteobacteria most of the gram negative bacteria are included in one group called proteobacteria. So, all this enteric bacteria which is like salmonella, E. coli they all come under uh, proteobacteria ok. So, they are all gram negative it is a major phyla because it shows variations in metabolism highly metabolic variations are seen. So, let us see some of the diseases caused by the bacteria many times they keep asking questions about uh, which organism causes this disease. So, it is better that you know it. I am going to read it out so that you know you can understand how to pronounce them and you can learn it that way. If you look at tuberculosis is TB is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, leprosy is caused by a group of bacteria called mycobacterium leprae, bubonic plague you know the plague one of the most important uh, or one of the most uh, fatal disease uh, is also transmitted by rats and all that. So, that is bubonic plague caused by an organism called uh, Pasteurella pestis, tetanus I told you Clostridium tetani, influenza the flu is caused by Haemophilus influenzae, whooping cough you know it is called caused by Bordetella pertussis, pertussis is the name for whooping cough ok. You take vaccine when you are very young. Then cholera, vibrio cholerae, syphilis, tryponema pallidum gonorrhea these are all sexually transmitted diseases, Neisseria gonorrhea 
uh, diphtheria you know uh, the, it's a kind of uh, disease of respiratory tract corini bacterium diphtheriae pneumonia diplococcus pneumoniae typhoid salmonella typhi these are some of the major uh, you know diseases caused by the bacteria in humans right and apart from that uh, you know there are uh, uh, certain bacteria which are actually called as uh, smaller than bacteria you know they, they are also bacteria but they do not have the cell wall they are called as mycoplasma mycoplasma uh, these also cause various diseases the advanced uh, I mean the way they are differing from other bacteria is they do not have the cell wall they, the smallest prokaryotes. Uh, they only have the cell membrane and they form you know they are also called PPLO pleuropneumonia like organisms they form fried egg like colony if you look at the colony under microscope it looks like a fried egg so they are called as fried egg colony so mycoplasma causes many diseases in plants as well as you know yellowing disease generally they cause uh, I, even in humans they do cause diseases and apart from that uh, let us look at finally some of the diseases caused to the plants right for example citrus there is a canker of citrus so if you see the citrus fruit it will have small small outgrowths outside it is called canker of citrus caused by xanthomona citri bacterial blight disease of rice caused by xanthomonas oryzae uh, angular leaf spot is uh, of cotton is caused by xanthomonas malvasiarum and fire blight of pears fruit is caused by pseudomonas soft rot of carrot inside the carrot you know you will feel that that uh, the tissue has become very soft it is called soft rot ervinia so these are some of the names of the uh, bacterial uh, diseases to the plants and there is one um, toxin produced by uh, one bacterium called Bacillus thuringiensis. It's called Bt toxin. It's very useful because it is, uh, it's a natural pesticide. It is the Bt toxin is very toxic to uh, the insects which feed on that. So that bacterium is heavily used in genetic engineering. Its name is called as Bacillus thuringiensis. Okay, Bt toxin. and uh, it is a pesticide kind of thing and if you look at uh, there is one term which you must know called bioremediation. So, what is bioremediation? Bioremediation means using the bacteria to act on oil spills or organic matter like sewage uh, instead of treating them chemically because lot of times you know when the ships uh, capsize ships containing big containers of oil right they capsize you would have seen in the TV right where lot of black coloration will be there around the ship because all the oil would have been uh, you know flooded out and then all the fish will die there the even the birds uh, which go there will look black in color it is all because of the uh, you know the oil spillage. So, nowadays they are working on bioremediation using some bacteria which feed on the oil and convert the oil into simpler compounds. Like for example, there is one organism called Pseudomonas putida. What it will do is it will feed on the organic carbohydrates, organic carbon and then it converts them into simpler compounds. So, like that there are some organisms which work on the sewage and you know organic matter in the sewage will be broken down. Similarly, there are some uh, some of the bacteria which live on you know the radioactive material and they help to deactivate the radioactive material. So, usage of microbes to you know uh, take care of this kind of pollution is known as bioremediation.